Hello, this is Sean for TightPoker.com, and today's video will look at a sit and go playing Pot Limit Omaha High Low. And Omaha is a game that's uh, definitely increasing in popularity. You see a lot more people at the cash game tables as well as playing sit and goes. A number of really good strategy books have been published in the last year, as well as the popular hand history tracking and analyzation program Hold'em Manager now imports and supports not just tournaments but all Omaha. So whether you play at the cash game tables or play in Omaha sit and go, and any of the variety of Omaha games, it's going to track it, which makes it a lot more fun and interesting in order to improve your play playing this you know, new form of poker traditionally to uh, a lot of Hold'em players. So this is when we were down to the final five. It uh, wasn't too much that was interesting beforehand, but uh, going in here, you'll see that uh, this is me, Ice Monkey 9. Uh, I go in with a chip lead. So uh, first hand here, and uh, it looks like uh, I'll just fix some things here. Uh, the blinds are actually uh, 6120, and I make a raise on the button. Uh, I pot it. Um, you don't want to just do a min raise, um, but uh, it's just basically playing position. Uh, both these players are playing very tight, and that was just a table read. And, um, you know, I don't have a great hand, but um, it, it could be pretty dangerous getting a, a few connected cards in there, as well as maybe hitting a kind of a miracle low if I see an ace deuce come and just hit the wheel. So uh, we get one caller, and then uh, we see the big blind push all in. And at this point, um, it's, it's a great time to go away because we're clearly beat. And uh, that's what happened on that hand. Okay, um, these hands aren't necessarily in sequential um, order in terms of this one happened right after the last one, but they are in chronological order. So this is later on, and now we're down to four, and I'm in the big blind with pocket aces, and one of them suited with the 9-10. So uh, it's a pretty good hand here if I get heads up, which is what happens, and uh, a pretty decently aggressive, uh, the person who's been stealing about 25% of the time, uh, Joe, we'll just call him Joe here, uh, he makes a raise. And so I could go ahead and 3-bet this, which uh, there's a lot of merit to, but I go ahead and flat because I've got position, and I'm hoping that uh, I've got some sort of connected, I either hit a set with the ace, or uh, there's a flush draw, or there's a straight draw, and I've got my pocket aces. And then I can just get it in um, if he see bets it. So I make the call. And the flop, unfortunately, doesn't really hit me too hard. Uh, I pair up my nine, which doesn't matter because I still have my aces. But this is a really, really dry flop uh, for this kind of game because there's only one undercard for the uh, for the low, meaning uh, two cards, eight or lower, are going to have to hit on the turn river, uh, which is, you know, I mean, it's not super likely, but um, it can happen. Uh, However, my pocket aces are probably really good unless he had a set of kings, which is unlikely. So he go ahead, goes ahead and makes a C bet, and this is a player that has been C betting. And this is why, you know, when you use hold a manager and you can keep stats now, uh, you get to see these kinds of things. And I see that he's C betting about 70% of the time, which means, you know, he, he's just going to go ahead and C bet, especially when he tried to make that steal attempt. So given my aces and this kind of a dry board, uh, you know, I, I take a, a bit of a risk, but I think it's a good calculated risk. And I just go ahead and shove right on top of that, and he goes away, and I actually take in a really nice pot to take a good commanding lead in, in the uh, sit-and-go. Okay, here's a hand that happened uh, actually pretty quickly. And I'm on the button, and I've got a very nice connected hand. Um, you know, I mean, ideally this is 8, 9, 10 jack, but uh, when you've got the one gap in the middle, it's actually not too bad, especially if you're able to spike that 10. Uh, in this situation on the flop, it just gives you, uh, you know, a 16-card draw, so... Um, I go ahead and just uh, limp in here. Uh, this guy here, Ten Bob, had been pretty cally in terms of you know he's not willing to let his big blind go and pretty aggressive post flop, which is fine. Uh, and so we just see him check it, and sure enough, um, you know I hit that big draw and a and top pair and a flush draw. So this is the kind of situation where um, you'll see like uh, if you follow the Dirt Challenge at all, at, like DirtChallenge.com. Uh, they'll post hands like this, and you'll see the good players at this point when you've got all these big draws, they just get it in. It's time to get it in. Uh, you're a coin flip, essentially, um, even against a set. Um, and so the, only, the worst thing here would probably be a, a better flush draw. So, uh, you know, it's time to fire away. So he checks, and uh, a half-pot bet is basically to induce a call or a raise because we're in such a good situation here. And he does go ahead and make that raise. So... Uh, chances are he's got a flush draw or uh, made a set, um, or he might be on a, some sort of draw, like if he had king-queen here. Um, it's not necessarily as, as good. So 
uh, it's just time to get the money in. And he goes ahead and calls. And uh, the money goes in. And we see that he's actually the favorite with that king-queen bigger draw and the bigger flush draw. So this was kind of a, a bit of a cooler in a sense that, you know, I've got the flush draw, I've got the straight draw, and, you know, whatever. He turns over the pretty much the same type of uh, drawing hand, only his is uh, one better. So uh, the good news here is that on the turn, uh, I happened to spike the seven, which gave me a 70-30 lead. Um, pretty commanding to eliminate this player. But sure enough, uh, he hit his gin card on the river, and... Uh, you know, the coin flip situation uh, just fell his way. So, um, but I definitely want to show all those combo draws that were out there, and it, it, it was time, and it was the correct play to, to get the money in. Now, definitely in sit-and-go play, um, when you're starting to get short-stacked in here, um, you know, I've got roughly 11 big blinds left. Um, it's time to take some calculated risks and get the money in when you hit a hand. So what happens here is that um, somewhat loose player... Uh, calls in. He likes to see a lot of flops. That's fine. Small blind calls. And I make the check. Um, this is not a hand that you want to be stacking off with at all. Um, it certainly doesn't hit any great lows because um, I, I don't have an ace or a deuce even. And then, uh, you know, as far as being connected, there's not too much that I can hit that's going to give me a nut type of hand that I can get my money in with. So I'm just all too happy to check here. And so the flop is 2, 6, 9, and um, I mean, that's not a great, great hand for me. I've got a gut shot to a five. Um, I've got two overs and I've got a 10 high flush draw, which, you know, isn't fantastic, but uh, who knows? So we get a check, 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 and that's fine. And I do hit the flush on the uh, turn. You know, obviously the um, any sort of straight possibilities are negated by the fact that I have a flush since that's better. So the fact that it's 10 high isn't great, but given the fact that I have you know, 1880 behind, there's 500 in the pot, and I'm going to get action. Um, you know, I've got to get it in here and hope for the best um, against a, a set, maybe, and hopefully he doesn't hit to a, a boat. So uh, he leads out for a min bet, and I'm potting it right there, uh, which is the right move. This guy gets out of the way, and curiously, he just calls. And I'm thinking this is a, a big mistake. Um, he shouldn't have called because he's got to know that with this much money in the pot, which is 2400 and I've only got 900 behind, I'm, I'm just going to shove my chips in regardless of whatever the river brings. Um, and that river is not too important. Um, it is a seven, um, you know, some straights connected, but I've got that beat. Uh, he min bets again. Um, I mean, unless he's got the nuts here with like an, uh, a straight flush or an ace king, um, chances are that I've got a beat. Uh, so I just go ahead and get the money in. He calls and he goes ahead and shows the two high, uh, two three flush. So um, that worked out pretty well in my favor and uh, played it the right way. And um, fortunately, this guy made a, a few mistakes in the hand. So um, definitely look for those opportunities uh, when you have them. So now we're in the money. Uh, one guy's come out to a, a pretty big lead and. Uh, Myself and Joe are, are just about the same. Uh, I've got a thousand chips on him actually, so uh, I've got an okay lead for second. And I really want to get heads up, but uh, it's a good time if you see people. People will alter the way they play once they're in the money. They'll either like, okay, I want to cruise, so I at least get that second place money, and those are the people you can abuse. And um, some people say like, I'm gonna make first place, and I've got to play ultra aggressive, and you've got to adapt to that too. So here's the hand, uh, you know. Five six seven uh, with the suited ace, um, pretty decent. Definitely want to see a flop, and that's what we do. Uh, the flop is not good though, but it's time to maybe put on our, our poker radar and see if we sense any sort of strength or weakness from our opponent. And he goes ahead and checks, and um, that was an opportunity really on that kind of a dryish board for him to bet. So when the seven comes, uh, I actually thought, well, it's a good time to represent the flush draw or maybe uh, even just top pair. So I went ahead and bet, and I just got a try call, which really made me think he's not on any sort of draw here with, with the flush. So um, if it hits, I can pie bluff again. And so the uh, eight comes, and uh, I believe I, I bet here, and I do. And it's um, I kind of dislike that it was uh, a minish bet here. I, I would have liked half pot or even pot um, to really represent the flush. Um, and a good player would have sensed that, and I think he was trying to, like, he was thinking that I was thinking that, so kind of a third level thing here because we had gone back.